Welcome. Um, thanks all for coming. I think this is the most attended AGM that we've had in quite a few years. Um, I'm going to go, there's like, I don't know, 500 people in the room. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, what we, what we did this year is we decided to hold it in the middle of the week uh, rather than at the end so that people want, you know, weren't preparing to f pre preferring to fly home instead. Um, we'll try and keep this short and sweet since I'm guessing a whole heap of you want to go into the PDNS. Um, and uh, I'll let uh, Terry move on with the program. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you have had a chance to, uh, to read the, uh, the copy of the minutes from the last meeting. Um, I'm presuming some of you will have pre-read it. Uh, next item on the agenda is basically to confirm the minutes of the, uh, of the 2010 AGM. Um, I think a show of hands is probably, probably going to work. So uh, the motion that the membership accept the minutes of the 2000, 2010 AGM is accurate. Uh, show of hands for yes. All right, show of hands for no. All right, that looks carried unanimously except for those that abstained, all right. Yeah, that's right, that's, yeah, it's more than a quorum, thanks. Uh, all right, so the next item is uh, are the uh, 2010 office bearers reports. This time I'd like to call on John Felito for the president's report, thanks. Thank you. Um, so I sent an email to the Linux Oz list earlier today with um, a very, very, very long president's report. I will go through it very quickly, um, jump in with questions. Uh, let's leave questions to the end. Um, so initially I wasn't president, of course, as most of you all know. Um, James Turnbull was originally elected as president and resigned in uh, May-ish um, due to being, due to finding employment with Puppet Labs in Portland. Um, so at that stage, um, uh, the council decided to move me into the president's role and then we um, appointed Josh to treasurer. Um, so, actually, let me skip back a second. Um, so yeah, it was late in December of 2009. Um, I approached James and a couple of others to see if, if we'd like to run for um, election to Linux Australia Council. Um, we ran on a, um, a platform of all things of transparency, governance, mandate, leadership and advocacy community and trying to be cross-regional. Um, I don't think we've met all of those goals, but we haven't done too bad a job. Um, I think that we've, we've covered a, a few events and, and tried to put some policies in place um, around those sorts of things. Um, but I think there's a lot more that we'd like to achieve um, in the coming year. Um, the council met, aimed to meet every fortnight, which we didn't do too badly on. Uh, we had 25 telephone conferences um, two circular resolutions and we had two face-to-face -face meetings of the council um, where we all got all together in Sydney. I think one in May and one in August from memory. Um, so LinuxConf 2011, um, I think I said a lot about how the council feels um, at the opening of the conference. The team this year have done an amazing job. It's been great working with the team um, over the last year. Um, it's been pretty easy to work with. Um, I'd like to thank Josh Hesketh, um, our treasurer. He was the liaison for the 2011 team um, and would basically give us most of the reports at the council meetings um, as to what they were up to. Um, they've done an amazing job in moving the venue at such short notice. And I think from being at the conference, you don't really notice that all that upheaval has happened. It just feels like a, an absolutely normal LCA. Um, and I'm told that we'll even be making a profit this year, which is pretty amazing considering all the extra expenses. <laughs> Now, Linux Australia also expanded the conferences that we support this year. We had a couple of requests from um, a couple of other smaller people that wanted, smaller conferences that wanted to put conferences on, mainly coming to us for um, insurance. Um, due to some insurance stuff that we had later on, we sort of said to them, well, how about you run this as a Linux Australia conference? It means that we can provide you things like insurance and financial support um, and a lot of other admin tasks that they wouldn't have to deal with. Um, PyCon AU 2010 was run in um, Tim, when was PyCon? Hmm? July? Yeah. Um, that was a pretty good success. I heard a lot of good stuff. There was a lot of good things on the Twitterverse about it. Um, thanks to Tim um, and the rest of the team, um, Neil Davenport and Richard Jones. Um, they did a pretty amazing job um, from the council's point of view. We sort of gave them a bank account and they just ran with it um, and did an excellent job. 
Um, they'll be running the conference again in 2011, um, and there'll be a new team in 2012. Um, they are, are, are doing a schedule of running the conference two years in a row, and all the teams that take that on will run that two years in a row in the same city, um, just aiming to get some economies of scale. Um, and we're, we're trying to do that with all the other conferences as well, where it makes sense. Um, the other conference that just ran before LCA was Drupal Down Under 2011. Um, Pete was the liaison for that, so I'm not sure. Who was the, who ran it, Pete? Yep. Okay. And that went pretty well. I wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and from a from our point of view, I think that went even easier than PyCon. We hardly knew what was happening. Magic just happened. So yeah, thanks very much to them for running that conference. Um, Linux Conf Year 2012 bid process. Um, we had a couple of submissions early in the year. Um, we went and did site visits in October. Um, and we'll have an announcement on who won the 2012 process in, at the end of Linux ConfAU on Friday at the closing. Um, we kicked off a media, we've kicked off the start of a media subcommittee this year. Um, we're also kicking off a sponsor subcommittee. That was around <coughs> us trying to, A, do stuff in terms of Linux Australia so that we can get some sponsorship work out there and some media work out there. Um, but more importantly for conferences and other subcommittees, um, to pull some of the work back, um, currently for most of the conferences that we run, there's a lot of duplication from year to year to year and not enough knowledge transfer. Um, so we've been doing some work to try and pull a lot of that work back into Linux Australia so that the conference organisers can concentrate on the important stuff about running the conference, which is the venue, the vibe, making sure things run smoothly and not have to worry so much about the more administrative bits. Um, same sort of thing with the Zookeeper subcommittee. Um, now with 2011, this is the fifth conference, I think, that's used Zookeeper. Um, and knowing who's got the bid next year, they're most likely to use Zookeeper as well. Um, which, I mean, from previous, previous to 2007, the conference management system changed every one to two years. So we've got a, a good, um, I think it's a good investment that we've made there in having the hack, the hack fest every year and, and getting those improvements into Zookeeper. Um, and hopefully some of the other conferences will start taking that up. It's a fully open source project up on Launchpad. Um, and we've had a little bit of interest from some other conferences there as well. Um, the Linux Australia Membership Survey. Um, that was uh, James Turnbull's baby and he kicked that off uh, before he left. Um, we've not done a good job of following through on that. Um, I finally got all the stats together for that uh, done last week and I'll be putting it up either tonight or tomorrow. Um, we're basically putting up the raw stats, the whole heap of CSV files um, and hoping that community will take that away and do some analysis. Um, it's very raw data, just percentages for the answers to each questions plus um, anonymised comments. If you look at the data and you want something more specific, like, you know, what percentage of people that are Linus also use Red Hat or something like that, then um, if, it's, if we don't think it's a, pri a major privacy issue, we can run some manual queries and get that data to you. Um, Linus did fill in the survey three times. It's quite impressive. Um, that was a membership survey. Um, we also did some work with the Australian Treasury Department this year. Um, they launched a project called uh, Standard, Bus Standard Business Reporting, the SBR, which is a way for businesses to interact with government in an electronic basis, for example, filing your BAS, filing an employment declaration. Um, part of that project is also a thing called OzKey, which is what businesses now use to authenticate with the ATO to file their BAS. Um, there was a bit of press earlier on in the year how there wasn't any Linux or open source support. Um, we did some work with them. I actually flew down to Canberra to do some testing for the OzKey stuff. That got released early November. So we've now got OzKey support for Linux. Um, they're targeting Ubuntu, but I've seen some other people get it working on other distros pretty easily. Um, and I'm working with them on getting a C version of the SBR API. Probably won't be open sourced initially, um, but we're working towards that process. Um, I mentioned earlier that we did some conferences. We're also supporting some other conferences later on in the year. Um, we've got WordCamp 2011 in about five or six weeks that we're supporting. Um, so we now run four conferences, Linux Conf AU, WordCamp, PyCon AU, and Drupal Down Under. Um, and as we, you know, if it makes sense, we'll probably do some others um, as we go forward. Um, a lot of work was done in terms of banking, financials, and insurance at the start of the year. Um, we moved to an online accounting system, zero.com, um, which 
Josh will talk a little bit about later. Um, that's massively streamlined um, how we do all the financial stuff and has made a lot of that process a lot easier. Um, we also did a lot of clean up on the bank accounts. Um, working with Westpac has been interesting, as, uh, as Terry no doubt knows from having to do it um, in past years. Um, we think we know who all the signatories are on the account and have convinced the bank that those are the only signatories and that people like Pia can't walk into the bank and take all the money out. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and we've also simplified the process in which we can ac give people access to the bank account. Um, we've also, and in, in terms of running the conferences and some of the subcommittees, um, it's now really easy for us to set up a new community account which doesn't cost us anything and say to the conference organisers, here's your bank account, here's your login to zero, do all the financials, do all your expense claims, um, and then finish off the conference and it's much easier for us to do reporting. Um, I did a lot of work on insurance at the start of the year. Um, we found that we had a couple of gaps um, in what we're, we were insured for. So we've now got volunteers insurance. So all the volunteers at conferences and various events that we run are insured because there's a distinction between volunteers and employees and we don't have any employees. So that was fairly important. Um, we've got the standard business insurance, PL and PI, as well as um, association insurance, which protects the council members in case someone decides to sue us for some crazy reason. Um, we looked at event insurance, and in hindsight, it may have been a wise decision to take event insurance, so we'll be looking at that a little bit more closely um, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, general admin stuff I'll skip. Um, we closed down the storage shed in Tasmania and did some stuff with it, leftover swag um, for Software Freedom Day. Um, we've done a lot of policy work. Um, we haven't released much of it yet. Most of it's still, still in a draft stage. We've been working on stuff like an expenses policy, diversity policy, um, a harassment policy, um, along with some thanks to, to Val Aurora, um, helped out with that. Um, we've also put some documentation in place around the Linux Conf AU bid process, um, the financial accounts, lugs of subcommittees, um, and conferences of subcommittees. We're trying to put some more documentation in place um, so we've got more knowledge transfer as well as, um, we're trying to aim to do that with the conferences as well, so we've got more knowledge transfer between uh, Linux Conf AU events. In very exciting news, we now own linux.conf.au. Um, um, you probably will have seen there was an AUDA process to decide what to do with the conf.au domain. Um, in, I think, December-ish, November-ish, uh, they came out with a report saying that they only can the domains. Um, we, there was a public consultation form that you could go and fill on the web. We encouraged people to do that. Um, the final report came down saying that they were getting rid of the domain, but they were going to grandfather linux.conf.au to us so that we've got it for perpetuity. Um, that's still in process, it's not finalised yet, but we definitely should get that. Um, I'd like to definitely thank Steve Walsh for that. He's put in a lot of work um, over the last couple of years, um, A, with that process through AUDA and, and petitioning them to get that stuff done, and B, just going through the, the pain that it is every year to get that domain organised. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Linux user groups. Um, Linux Australia tries to do what it can to support um, the user groups. Um, Alex Boxall, I'd like to thank. She was the um, LUGCOMS liaison during the year and attended the LUGCOMS monthly meetings to see what the user groups were doing, what they were after, and if we could help them with anything. Um, as part of that, we're now offering some resources to user groups. Um, LUGs that don't have the resources to set up their own infrastructure can come to us and we'll give them a subdomain, a wiki, a website, and a mailing list, or, and DNS, or any of the above. Um, we're also doing some policy work around uh, lugs being able to become subcommittees of Linux Australia. So similar to sort of how the conferences run, it would mean that a lug exists as part of Linux Australia, which means we can give them insurance um, and can give them a bank account and do their bars and all that sort of stuff. So that's still in process and we've had a little bit of interest from some of the lugs um, in doing that because it saves them some money. The grant scheme. Um, every year Linux Australia budgets about $20,000 um, in terms of grants. Um, I don't think we've ever come anywhere close um, to reaching that budget. We don't tend to get a lot of grants. Um, this year we gave grants to um, a stall at the Sydney Education Expo, Software Freedom Day in Canberra, Software Freedom Day in Melbourne, um, the paper by Brendan Scott on... I can't remember, Trade but it's in... Trade Practices Act Applying to Licensing. Thanks, Michael. Um, and we sponsored... Uh, the Libra Graphics meeting in Brussels. Brussels. Thank you, Donna. Um, 
we sponsored them, I think, on the basis that they would try and get an Australian out there, and they did get... Um, they flew out Andy? Yeah. Yeah, they flew out Andy Fitzsimmons. Um, so yeah, if, look, if you have any ideas about what we could be doing in terms of the grant scheme or have some ideas for a grant, please, please go onto the, the website and check out the program and apply because we just don't end up filling the budget every year. And that's part of what the profits that we get from the conferences is supposed to go towards. Um, as I mentioned, we had the Sydney Ex Education Expo. Patrick uh, Elliott Brennan did an excellent job um, of running that. Um, we had some support there from LPC Australia. They sponsored part of the stand as well as being along on the stand with us, uh, thanks to Sridhar. Um, from OLPC Australia for that assistance. Um, Software Freedom Day was in September as usual um, and uh, we had a couple of teams around Australia participating um, and in particular the Canberra and um, Melbourne teams received sponsorship. We also gave teams that requested it, which was in Canberra, Melbourne and Adelaide. Um, we gave leftover swag from Tasmania, um, which was a whole heap of tuzzers and playing cards and stuff to give out on the day. Um, it was costing us more in storage every month um, then was worth to keep the stuff. Um, in closing, I'd like to thank um, the other council members. Um, they've done a great job in, um, in supporting me throughout the year. Um, they put in a lot of work. It's, it's a lot more work than you expect it to be um, when you uh, get onto the council. Um, but it's, look, it's fun and it's, uh, it's very satisfying. Um, I'd also like to support the volunteers, especially the volunteers at LCA. They do an amazing job. Um, and all the other conferences and the organisers of those conferences um, who put in a lot of their free time um, to make those open source conferences work. Um, and look, lastly, I'd just like to give um, the LCA team another big round of applause. I think it's been an amazing conference in unbelievable circumstances. All right, I'd, uh, I'd now like to call on Joshua, on Joshua Hesketh to uh, present the, uh, the Treasurer's report. Thanks, Joe. This is uh, more of a summary than a Treasurer's report. Um, I'm just going to explain where Linux Australia is uh, with their finances and what we've done in the past year. So, as John said, I joined the Council halfway through, in, uh, well officially in June, but I was involved a bit before then. Um, by this point, John had already done a lot of transition into new software, as he had mentioned, um, into Xero, uh, which is, it's been an excellent tool for us to use. It's allowed us to do a lot more as a council, because it's taken away a lot of headaches in our operations. Um, as John already touched on, this allowed us to give events and subcommittees access to their finances so they can make payments and do the invoicing and reconciling and everything themselves. So that's less weight on my shoulders, which is always nice. And it also meant that they could get payments as they need them, reimbursements and things like that were really quick. Um, I mean, for example, I don't think anyone was ever waiting for more than 48 hours to have a reimbursement, which previously anyone who's volunteered to be involved in Linux Australia or Council will attest to the financial burden that is sometimes asked by volunteers uh, in terms of reimbursement. So I think that's very important because it means that we can be more active as a community in that regard. So uh, another thing to relieve some of the pressure on the council for uh, this year and future years we're hoping uh, is that we have contracted an accountant and this is partly the reason why I'm not presenting the Treasurer's report at the moment, because the accountants are still going through and fixing up last year's um, finance. And as you can imagine, it, it is only one month into the new year, so they haven't had much time to do that. I believe they were working on it on Monday just past, so we're hoping it's not too far away. Additionally, as of, I think, July, it's now mandatory for us as an association in New South Wales to have an official audit. And accountants means that they can tidy up our accounts and liaise and assist with that in addition to filing our BAS statements and taking care of the official documentation that otherwise provides quite a headache for the council. So that, that explains primarily why uh, we don't have a treasurer's report at the moment. Um, what this means is that in the next month or two, hopefully not any longer, 
we'll present a, an official report for the Treasurer's position and um, we will call a special general meeting at some point to approve that and we're hoping that it will only be one item on that agenda. Um, so I'll show now if I may use John's laptop. I'll show now some of the um, reports that we have from, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> the mouse is over there. There it is. Can you open Dropbox, please? Um, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll show the reports from uh, last year that we have. They are likely to change a little bit, hopefully not too much. Um, as a result of moving into new financial software, it does mean that it's difficult for us to compare amounts um, or cash flow, profit and loss, from 2010 to previous years. So the profit and loss becomes more an indication of um, a balance or cash flow, um, which balance. you'll see in a minute. Um, preliminary reports, please. Financials. Oh, where did it go? Uh, council. Right. Um, Does it not sync, uh, maybe? Possibly. It will be on my laptop if it's not. Is it not in financials? 2010, there we go. Sorry. And then preliminary reports. Okay, right. Okay. So let's just start with the balance sheet. Um, if you can put that on the projector. That's okay. Right. Um, so. Here you can see our balance sheet. So this is of December 31st, end of last year. Um, it's basically just a summary of our assets um, as per bank accounts. So is that readable very well? Um, can we zoom in a little bit? Um, that's a good question. Excellent. This is, um, so it, it's, it should give an indication of where we stand financially. Um, so from I think I think the bottom line was about 338 once John scrolls down because um, we have a few outstanding liabilities that are being taken care of. This is not a very good figure because in January we've run Drupal Down Under and LinuxConf clearly. Their major expenses have been this month and so that's taken a huge difference in that number. So this number is for last year but it is quite different already. Um, I believe it would be more around uh, 280. Uh, clearly we're only, you know, 20 six days in, I don't, we haven't reconciled that amount yet. Um, so that's where we stand um, in terms of balances. Um, could we have a look at the cash flow, please? One or two? Uh, the first one, that one, yeah. So this is a, a cash flow for all of, um, oh, no, this is just LCA 2011, um, as opposed to all of uh, Linux Australia. So the, the beauty of using zero means that we can uh, generate cash flows um, for our subcommittees um, I'm only going to show you LCA and our LA finances uh, today. Um, there's not a lot to look at. You can see that registrations opened in September. That's where we start getting uh, cash flow. Well, actually, it must be October where we start getting cash flow for conference re registrations. Uh, and leading up to there, we've had cash flow for sponsorship. Um, if you look at our expenses, um, you can see where money is going. Merchandise and swag are big ones but there's clearly the, some other really big ones that are missing, such as the venue, which would probably be one of the bigger expenses, uh, and other expenses that will be incurred this month. So again, this summary is uh, a little bit preliminary in that sense. Can we move to the next cash flow, please? Next one? Or? Yep. yep. So the next cash flow will be a summary of all of Linux Australia's expenses, which is inclusive of LCA. Um, so you can see again where the sales came in, in in October for LCA we started having more money which is nice uh, but you can also see where um, PyCon's registrations came in. There's an overlap in registrations here for Drupal Down Under as well um, which also explains some of the extra sponsorship money. Uh, again they experienced expenses in January so this is yet to all change. Um, what I'll do is I'll show a summary of 2010's accounts that Andrew Ruthven put together for us. Um, because this is mostly finalised now, however, we only have the report up to July and we, Andrew hopes to publish something um, more final very soon. 
Um, this just gives you an idea of, of where money goes. Leave a cross. Uh, this just gives you an idea of, of, of where money goes in running a Linux Australia. And um, that's Compi's having fun there. Unmaximize it. Okay, let me try that. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so um, in LCA 2010, um, Andrew and his team took the opportunity to reconcile some of the outstanding tax bills that Linux Australia had due to difficulties with managing money in New Zealand. So I think um, Andrew deserves a lot of thanks for his work he put in there, and, and we're certainly very thankful for it. Um, so you can read where the money went uh, yourselves. Uh, we imagine that the categories that the money's gone into will be similar um, this year for 2011. Uh, so that will give you an idea of where we'll be when we publish those reports. Um, probably, you probably won't see a good summary of 2011 and, until next year, though. Yeah. That, that's sort of the way it will have to go. Uh, the interesting thing is that we've left about $10,000. I'm not sure the exact figure at the moment. New Zealand dollars. So in in New Zealand, in an ANZ account that Andrew is managing for us. Um, so thanks to him again for that. And that money allows us to reimburse uh, people who are involved in our membership in, in New Zealand. So if, when we fly people over for Ghost or Zookeeper Hackfest, we don't have to worry about dealing with international currencies. It saves us a couple of hundred dollars a year in transfer fees and exchange rate fees and stuff. So it's yep. So that's just another thing that we've um, set up this year that will hopefully facilitate making man managing Linux Australia easier. Can we have a look at the uh, last document, please? Profit and loss. Okay, so this is a profit and loss, but uh, as I said, the because of the new financial software, it doesn't compare it to previous years. However, it does give us a, an indication of the balances between uh, the different conferences we have ran, which is a little bit interesting. So you can see Drupal Down Under um, turned over a profit of 33, but this is in December, remember. Um, they've experienced their largest bills this month, and I believe they're probably looking at a profit of $8,000, which for a conference of 160 people that only just started is quite excellent. So we are hoping that this year we can put some of this money back into the Drupal community in that regard. Uh, it's the same sense for PyCon. That figure is quite high. <laughs> oh, no, that, that, that's, that's just income. If you go down, sorry, we're not looking at the bottom line. Um, Drupal, though, is still about the same. That's why I was confused, because the expenses have only just come in. But you can see here, uh, PyCon turned a profit of 7000 So again, that will go into running the next year's Python conference. and uh, Sorry, this year's Python conference. And um, in the Python community, we're hoping. Uh, and you can also see where we're tracking for LCA. But again, a lot of expenses have come through. I'm not sure what we're expecting in a profit uh, for this year. Um, given the situation they're in, it's quite difficult to predict. So we can see that Linux Australia um, has clearly spent a lot more money than they've earned. The only real money that Linux Australia earns is on interest on their accounts, which is fine. We're supported by the conferences. But it gives you an idea of how the conferences support Linux Australia. And I think that's important to note that by coming to these conferences, the community um, just makes Linux Australia, who in turn give it back through things like Software Freedom Day and that sort of thing. So I think that's all the reports I have to show for now. Um, I, these are very preliminary, so I'll have something better in a month or two once we have accountants review everything for us, and we'll have to call an SGM then. Um, so finally, I, I would just like to uh, thank the treasurers of all the subcommittees um, who have been involved, because as I said, giving them access to zero means they can manage a lot of this themselves, so there's a lot less weight on my shoulders, and it means that my role is more uh, making sure they're okay and, and helping them in that process, which um, I have been documenting. Uh, so I have drafted a subcommittee policy and a financial guide policy that we will be reviewing as a council and amending and hopefully have some good documentation in place. We have a finalised expense policy um, that's available on the council wiki, if anyone wants to look at that. Um, yeah, and the only other point I'd like to make is that the 2012 team in Perth already, I mean, the 2012 team already have their money in their account. So uh, I think this is the first time that any LCA team has um, gotten money in the year before the conference. So the year before the 
current conflict studies, uh, which I think is great. So thank you. Right, thanks, guys. Uh, the uh, next item on the agenda was the presentation of financials. I think Josh has more than adequately explained why, uh, why that won't be happening. Uh, so that brings us to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the next item, which is endorsement of, uh, of the... Well spotted. All right. Yes, let's do that. All right. Um, in that case, I'd, uh, I'd like to put the motion that the, that the reports be accepted. Sure. Correct. No, the president's was the only one. The president's was the only one presented. So I'd like to put the motion that the president's report be accepted. Show of hands for aye. Show of hands for noes. All right, carried unanimously. Um, thanks, John. That was a good point. Uh, the uh, next item is the uh, the endorsement of the committee activities. Now. This is basically a, a vote of confidence in the uh, in the activities of the, the committee and uh, and uh, what uh, you know the, the strategic direction they've set and the activities that they've done in the past. I'd like to put the motion that the membership endorses the action of the 2010 uh, Linux Australia Council. Show of hands for aye. <laughs> Show of hands for nays. All right. Yet again, unanimous. Uh, given that the uh, Given that agenda item six is the announcement of the results of the 2011 LA Council election, I'd uh, I'd like to uh, like to uh, suggest a round of applause for the 2010 Council or for the outgoing 2010 Council. <laughs> it is hard work. They do it because they 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 know why they do it. But but there's no denying there's no denying the level of level of effort involved. <laughs> so. It's, uh, it's always good to recognise it. Um, I'd like to call on Stuart Smith as the, uh, as the returning officer to, uh, to uh, give us the announcement of the results for the 2011 LA Council election. And having written the election software, I assert it is free from bugs. Uh, <laughs> there's one in the ECQ right now. <laughs> of course there is. Uh, Okay, so there's a couple, but it works. Um, so it seems to all have gone smoothly uh, again. Uh, anyone who can actually design websites is welcome to make it pretty. Um, I intensely suck at it. Uh, so we have election results here. There are 73 members who voted in the election, which is on par for what it usually is. Uh, so that's a, a fairly decent turnout. Um, if, in case people don't know, voting is preferential. Uh, people can be elected to one position. Uh, and not more than one. People can stand for multiple positions and uh, there is a position in the ordering committee members which more than one person can be elected to. Therefore, the code to computer is fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, 50 bucks the first person who can construct a single SQL query to compute that. Seriously. Uh, cool. So, President, uh, surprisingly enough, the one person standing for President was elected. Which was John. Uh, <laughs> well, I assumed everyone had like voted in the election and like <laughs> overwhelming majority. These will all be visible on the website later. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we have no idea what the organization would do if that was uh, the other way around. Uh, <laughs> so there's some great, uh, let's hope that never happens in the whole algorithms. So, so, so why is the option in the software? Yeah, patch is welcome. <laughs> Vice President, we had, again, surprisingly, the one person who stood for the position was elected. Congratulations, Alex. I'm not sure if that's an appropriate request. <laughs> Funnily enough, the one person standing for secretary, uh, so a glutton for punishment usually, uh, as I referred to it back in the day, Peter, congratulations. Uh, another glutton for punishment, uh, 
or masochism, as uh, I referred to the, the position today. Treasurer, Josh, congratulations or commiserations, depending which way you want to put it. <laughs> and we have the interesting position, uh, which there was actually some, some con uh, competition around. So I won't ask for a drum roll. You had that at the speaker's dinner. Pardon? Who was standing? We had... Uh, left here at the start, uh, Mary, uh, Michael, Kelly, Elspeth, and James Asepi. And at the end, drum roll. Come on. I'm just going to let you do that until your hands hurt. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Mary Gardner, Michael Carden, and Kelly Yo. So yes, uh, congratulations all, or commiserations, uh, as you'll find out, it's a whole bunch of work. Uh, so I ask that everyone else who was, uh, did not stand or did not elected do the brilliant thing of to help out where possible. Uh, you do not have to be elected to a position to do stuff for the organization. In fact, not being elected is an excellent way to actually be able to do things. Uh, so it's, it's interesting the way it goes around of all the formal things to organizations. That's my strong encouragement as a past president as well. So thank you. and. Good luck with the coming year, new council. Okay, uh, now we're up to general business. Um, are there, uh, I guess to kick off, are there, uh, are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions they'd like to put to council pastor? Oh. Right. Um, uh, and the only other thing I wanted to uh, thank uh, Elspeth. Um, who's an outgoing member of the council for her work throughout the year uh, was much appreciated. Thank you. Um, and I'll raise one quick bit of business, which is the LCA 2013 bid process. Um, we now have two competing teams um, putting in bids. We have the, uh, the Canberra team, who we've, we've seen blogging and and making it very obvious that they're uh, putting in a bid. Um, and earlier this evening, uh, this afternoon, I saw a, a bid on Twitter from the Antarctica team. <laughs> they would be awesome. Okay. There's, cool. There's also a, a rival bid um, coming in from Yas as well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Does, does Pia know about that bid? No. <laughs> well, it's, not on the team. It's, it's just me and Poe at the moment. <laughs> Um, so I highly encourage... Is anyone thinking of putting in a bid apart from those locations? Yes? Sydney? Newcastle. Newcastle, okay. Potential Newcastle bid. So if anyone's thinking of in Newcastle, have a chat. Anyone else? I've talked about Antarctica people. They've decided to wait until 2014. Who have? Which? Antarctica's going to wait until oh, Okay, Antarctica's waiting until 2014. They were, they were intimidated by the Canberra bid? Yes, yes, right, okay. <laughs> um, and I, I have heard rumours of... <laughs> I have heard rumours of a Sydney bid, but... Uh, I was going to say, the picture on the Antarctica webpage is Polar Bear not wearing a beak of a penguin, but wearing a head of a penguin. <laughs> 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 I'm surprised it's not easy. Running. Okay, I'll be a runner. Here we go. Does this mic work? Yes. Okay, running. Any questions? <laughs> Mr oh, Steele has a question. So two questions. As a member of the Mirror Subcommittee, yes. um, has any consideration been given to these other events that we sponsor, encouraging them, if they have video, to provide it to the Mirror so it's archived? No, but that's an excellent idea. Can you please do that? Yes. Like, I'd, I'd be cool with it being like a condition of funding or something. But yeah, yeah, no, 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 I think that's a great idea. Um, I think, so one of the things that's happening at the moment is I think most of our subcommittees are sort of working in isolation and we don't have any... I mean, you've never sent us a report. We've got no reporting or anything That's like that. That's because we don't do anything, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, um... Well, so that, that's my second question. Our yes. hardware is ageing. Is there any plan to do a hardware refresh of the various LA there servers? There is. Can you send through a list of what you would require? Because we're actually looking into hardware sponsorship at the moment. Cool. Yeah, not a problem. Maybe we should get the subcommittees to do a report every year. I'm going to... That was a grass Yeah, no, we haven't, yeah. So... I will. Yeah, we do. Have, there was another mic floating around <laughs> somewhere. I'll have a 10 second one. While, Up the uh, top. You said um, yes. more follow on and communication with the teams. 
one thing that came up post OSDC last year, and I'm trying to follow up with both OSD and Linux Strayer, and I kind of got distracted by doing LCA 2009 video in 2011, yes. um, is having somewhat more for network specifically, actually having infrastructure that we can just roll up to the conferences, plug into Uplink, and have a conference network that doesn't yep. require Steve, James, myself, any other dozen people who've probably done it to not sleep for three straight days. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. So one of the things that we're doing, oh, I almost said the name of the people that won the bid. Uh, one of the things we're doing with the next bid team is encouraging them to use a Linux Australia wiki and a Linux Australia server and a Linux Australia Zookeeper instance so that um, we've, we've had a problem where for the last, since I've been involved in 2007, while there's always a really good intention to pass on knowledge and wikis from team to team to team, by the time the teams finish the conference, they just don't have the energy and the wikis just never get passed on. Um, so we're going to try and fix that by moving, moving as much as that stupid administrative sysadmin infrastructure stuff in-house to Linux Australia as possible, um, like sponsorship teams, media, all that sort of stuff to help with that. So yeah, any work you're interested in doing on that would be great. And as I said earlier, talk to Steve. And, yeah. As I recover from the conference and actually get to build a prototype, I will be grabbing James and yep. Steve Walsh and other people as we happen to be in similar cities and actually trying to nut this out in a way that hopefully, I, I'm actually not planning something that will work as such for LCA, but for yep. all the other conferences, and it might help LCA. Yes, I mean, so we have been shipping APs around to Drupal Down Under and OSTC and other places, and that seems to have worked okay, but more documentation, the better. Um, before James, Josh, you had a response to something? Yeah, it's a bit of a response to both of those things. Um, in terms of uh, admin team and that sort of thing, is that the subcommittee policy that I was, I've written, it's, there's actually, I've written two policies. It, it covers subcommittees and teams, which would include admin team. Um, and I'd like to encu encourage Julian and co uh, to form a networking team under this policy that I've written. That would be cool. And things such as network upgrades, um, so, so new networking equipment, and server upgrades and things like that, there, there are ways in this policy to deal with expenses like that uh, and liaising towards the council. And the other thing that um, I think Pia mentioned or somebody uh, on reporting is that part of the new policies that I've written um, will require these teams to report on a regular basis, whether it be you know fortnightly for LinuxConf or once Yearly a year for the mirror team, for the mirror team, or you know that that sort of thing. Uh, James, sort of following on from that, um, LCA has a bunch of equipment that has been bought for this year to deal with certain things like AV and other bits and pieces like that. That yes. we fully intend and will ensure is passed on to the next year and is used. Yes, I mean, the equipment's actually been, well, apart from where is the ship that has the Wellington equipment right now, hmm. <laughs> pass on of equipment from year to year has been fairly good. Um, so do we know where that is yet? Well, it's, in it's in Sydney still, on a ship? <laughs> right. Run faster, Pia. I am. In light of the new auditing obligations, yes. has any consideration been given to moving the financial year so that the Treasurer's report could be submitted at the AGM? Yes, we have thought about that. I think we were in a bit of a mess and this year in terms of it being the first year that we've used zero. Um, I think in future years and if reconciliation is done in December, I think there's probably enough time to do an audit um, before the AGM. But yeah, I'm going to. Th I think I'll sit down with Josh and we'll think about that because it it is tight. I mean, you know, the financial year ends in December. We've got an AGM in like the third or fourth week of February. Oh, sorry, of January. Um, and the other thing with it having it on that sort of ratio, it means that at the AGM we want to report on LCA. Like you know, this year we want to report on LCA 2011, but you can't because it's like halfway through. Whereas if it was a month or two later, most of the expenses get tidied up and you can give an accurate report. So yeah, I think. We might have a think of it and potentially vote on it as, at the SGM where we provide um, the documentation. So um, if I remember correctly okay. from reading through the, uh, the new associations legislation a couple of weeks ago, um, there's actually a requirement that the audited report be presented at the AGM. Um, obviously we couldn't do it this year because yes. the new legislation's only just come in and we haven't had time to adjust. 
but I think we need to make sure that does happen as a legislative requirement in future. Yes, yes, no, absolutely, absolutely. And I'll, I'll, I, Josh gave the Fair Trading Association a couple of calls. We might give them another call and say, do we need to rename this to an SGM and call the other one an AGM, or do they care or not care? And yeah, we'll sort that out. Uh, anyone else? Any other questions? Oh, up in the middle. Hi, I'm Alastair, I'm on a committee of a lug, and I'm just wondering, um, lugs can sometimes run themselves, uh, own infrastructure, um, sometimes they can't, that's been addressed. Mm -hmm. um, but the question I have is, uh, things that aren't necessarily just a lug activity, uh, like maybe Software Freedom Day, mm -hmm. is there any proposals for that to be uh, partially coordinated by the council on a national basis? Are you volunteering to do that? Uh, no, but um, <laughs> so, I, I so think... As with, as with most things, that's a great idea, but it comes down to someone having the time to do the coordination and sit down. I mean, Pia did a great job of that when she was president of Linux in... What, was, what were you Software president? Freedom International. Software Freedom International. Um, but it's a time thing. I mean, the, one of the interesting things about our community is the people like myself and the rest of the people on the committee that stand up and say, we're going to do this are usually the busiest people in our community. So, um, you know, anyone that's prepared to say, "Hey, I think that's a great idea," um, step up, say you want to do it, and go for it, and we'll and we'll fully support that in terms of funding and whatever's required. In the absence of someone putting themselves forward for that, uh, would you be able to poll the membership of Linux Australia and f ask them, "Is Software Freedom Day important enough that you would want to see Linux Australia funds going towards um, coordinating that?" Because yeah, look, that's, that's possibly an option. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Donna? No. <laughs> um, oh, Michael? Oh, yes? Oh, it's just too late. Sorry to be a serial offender. Yes. So it seems like LA You're has a really lot of phys sorry. physical assets now. You know, we've got container ships floating yes. around yeah. with stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> How much money are we talking about? Is it time to start talking about asset tracking, or is that just like too anally retentive? Mm, in terms of in terms of what I know, roughly exists in terms of what's you know on a ship somewhere in the Tasman. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, it's like five or six tubs worth of stuff. Um, there's some semi-expensive things we've been given, like sponsorship. Like there's an A1 printer um, and some other things. Um, it would probably would be good to have a list of assets, and I think we can we do that in zero. Uh, I think there's an asset to a degree. Yeah, yeah. They're all rented. Yeah. So a lot of stuff we're, we're leasing, and uh, and yes, you're right, and we probably should do that. But it's it's like it's enough. It's a small enough list of things to fit on a wiki page. Yeah. As someone who's inventoried yeah. the pretty much the complete. As XLCA assets, at least probably three times mm. um, in and around. It's just yeah. in and around LCA eight. Um, it is wiki page material. Having having the list in one place or at least place for location. Yeah. Because some of that information is incredibly pain in the ass to deal with at sometimes, and knowing. Certainly, the ability for someone to know, I've got five streams, but it turns out that if we want to do video like 2008 did, mm. we've only got four sets of so gear that still yeah, works, yeah. that sort of thing, or yep. we need to go and buy something. So that wiki page should be enough and should cover most things and is probably needed. There's also a couple of oddball cases like I have in my house the entire, or what remains of the entire video assets of LCA 2008 and 2009 which will eventually make it back to the LA storage. But the same fact, that was sitting in Steve Walsh's house for a yeah, year. Yeah. And while it's true the LA committee almost certainly know where it is and know where we live, yeah. it's somewhat sub-ideal. Yeah, agree. Um, from an LCA point of view, having just helped organise one significantly, yes. it's very important to know what the hell we have and it's been mm. hard to get that information when okay. we needed it. That's good feedback. So, like we were trying to work out exactly what was where in terms of 
you know, networking equipment, printers, APs, whatever, and just getting that sort of stuff has been harder than we would have liked. Yep. Is that? We will see what we can do. <laughs> Is that? I seem to be hearing volunteers. Yes. <laughs> well, well. As I heard someone say earlier in the conference, well volunteered, James. <laughs> Paul, I think. Yes. Yes. Um, following on from this morning's keynote talk, yes. um, I note, having just tried it, that linux.org.au doesn't have an IP version 6 mm -hmm. name. Do, what's the state of the linux.org.au um, IP version 6 readiness? <laughs> um, I d hang on, hang on, there's um, Mike. Due to an, a configuration error at the hosting facility, we did in fact have IPv6 connectivity um, about a month or two ago for the period of about a week. <laughs> <laughs> but, so being worked on, I think, is the answer to that. But let's, let's minute that we'll uh, hassle the admin team about IPv6. Any other... James? I was wanting to ask what, so going on from the, your question earlier about um, infrastructure and so forth, mm -hmm. is it worthwhile Linux Australia moving away from physical infrastructure where it is sane and instead using things like, you know, not no. cloud computing but virtual machines and so forth where we don't have to deal with the hardware as much? That has been raised and the admin team, I believe, had a meeting this week to discuss that. I don't know what the outcome was. Yeah, so I just... The point came up concerning things like the LCA VM dying in rather horrid ways that were very suboptimal and yeah, yeah, things like that. I would prefer if it was someone's problem other than Linux Australia. Any other questions? No one. Okay. Um, well. Um, what I'd love to encourage, if people can think about the sorts of things, um, and I think we'll, we've gotten a little bit of feedback from this out of the survey, um, which hopefully we'll have out by the end of the week, but if people can start thinking about, you know, we've got a pretty good turnout here, so hopefully there's people here that care about what Linux Australia is and does. Um, if you can think about what you want Linux Australia to do, um, I mean, it feels a little bit like we're starting to concentrate on running open source conferences. Um, I think I'd like to see us doing more than that. Um, so, you know, volunteers are welcome. If you have ideas of what, you know, a great idea for something that we could do, that we should be doing, that we shouldn't be doing, um, more than happy to support and put funding behind that. Um, ignoring this year, LCA usually makes a pretty good profit um, and, you know, we can put that money towards supporting the community. That's sort of the whole point. Um, I'll hand back over to uh, Terry to close the AGM. Thanks. All right, I declare the uh, Linux Australia 2011, uh, 2011 AGM closed. Thank you, everybody.